Uh, another topic I think of interest to our um, audience would be our uh, respective approach to soft tissue um, in terms of attached tissues after our augmentations. As you know, uh, whether it's anterior maxilla, posterior maxilla, anterior mandible, posterior mandible, in essence, we're left with, after advancement of our flaps, a relative lack of attachment. So um, would you care to comment on your approach using uh, mucoderm for the most part in your strip graft technique? And I certainly will be able to, to comment uh, as well on, on my protocol. So basically, um, <coughs> Yeah, after bone regeneration, you know, once you close the flap, you can get the bone, but quite often you lack keratinized tissue. And I think you also have to look at the mandible and the maxilla in a different way. In the mandible, we don't have, especially in the posterior, we don't have such a, you know, deep vestibule to begin with. But of course, we uh, even lose that. So, but I think the mandible or soft tissue graft is not that difficult. However, we're still in the mandible doing something minimally invasive like microsurgical soft tissue graft, so the patient is, is, is more comfortable, you know, <clears throat> after having a bone graft, an implant, we don't want to, have to do, we don't want to do like a, sure. a big surgery, but still want to get keratinized tissue on the lingual, that to me is very important, around those implants, and also on the buccal. And then in the maxilla, my main focus in the last couple of years was that uh, if I distort the tissue, sometimes the mucogingiva junction is more palatinal than the implant. Sure. And I need 10 plus millimeters of keratinized tissue because I need the crest plus I need a vestibule. Many of these patients have a high smile line. So if you do an apically positioned flap, you will see several centimeters of open wound. I mean, how big of a soft tissue graft are you gonna harvest from the palate? I mean, are you going to take the full palate almost off sure. or the half of the palate and do a free gingival graft? It's going to be painful, it's going to be ugly. Exactly. So we have developed a technique with utilizing microsurgical strips based on the uh, Han and, and Takei article, and then utilizing a collagen matrix, which is the mucograft. But it is in the last years, we also focused how can we get non-palatinal looking soft tissues, number one. So I'm going to present that that we, we started to take even less of tissues like micrographs and sometimes from the, from the labial side of the gingiva just to transplant cells. And from these cells, we expect that these cells will migrate into the uh, matrix and we can transplant the color and even the stippling, the architecture of the tissue. And then the other focus that I will also uh, present, okay, if I have a patient who's young, coming with a vertical defect in the anterior maxilla. Needs bone, that bone needs to stay there for 60 plus years. And the patient may not want to have a pontic. <laughs> so let's say missing three teeth, four sure. teeth. Sure. And you want to have single teeth. How can you transplant soft tissues on top of the bone? Number one, how can you do the bone graft that is not going to go away? Number two, how can you, you do soft tissue grafting that you will have a positive architecture, a papilla in between the implants, and then when they smile, you will have a, a natural color. So that is, I think the anterior maxilla is very complex and I'm loving that, I'm loving Agree, that. Agree, totally. And uh, that I'm gonna present, and, and what I really like in this symposium is that we're gonna have the time. Yes. So we're gonna really have the time. Yes. I'm, I'm preparing so many videos on great. this. Great, great. Also on the buccal flaps, that uh, for example, how do you protect the mental nerve? in a predictable way exactly. with two patients. One who never had surgery, that's easy. The other one who's gonna to come to you after multiple surgeries, all scar tissue, yes. and around the mental nerve, you have to plaster the tissue in a way that you don't injure anything and exactly. it's just opening up. Yes. So things yes. like this. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Well, great, so typically your strip graft technique, you're using mucoderm. Mu uh, it's called correct. mucograft. The mucograft, yeah. yes, mucograft. Um, for me personally, uh, it's been about an 18, almost 19 year journey with, uh, with dermis, uh, Elderm uh, specifically. Uh, I used it primarily um, for a small vestibular plastic to begin with, just kind of experimenting because nobody really had talked the about it for that before. application. In fact, to this day, quite honestly, I don't really think anybody's talking about it still. Uh, Pat Allen, our, our good friend and colleague, 
Uh, of course, has talked about alloderm for a number of years with regard to root coverage, right. as you know. A closed healing. And, uh, but the closed healing, exactly. And for me, the way I see it, it's kind of all or none. You're either pregnant or you're not. There's no in between. It's black or white, no gray zone. And using alloderm, it's either completely submerged, meaning I'll use it for uh, what I call pre bone graft soft tissue grafting, uh, where sometimes that vestibule is so thinned out, so if we're literally doing our filleting and advancing that flap, we could thin out that tissue enough to where we, we could potentially dehiss it uh, in right. the vestibule, and I've right. done that early on. So the long and short of that one is I figured out and realized that, hmm, why not try a layer of this elderm, which by the way comes in varying thickness because of the way it's pure procured. Um, so it's not a uniform thickness, but still, in general, in using it in a closed manner uh, and, and allowing it to heal for almost three months, in general, I will get roughly about a three millimeter increase of thickness of a lamina propria that's not really a true lamina propria as we know it. It's kind of a scar band, it's fibrosed. Uh, I've got nice histo to show on that. but. What is impressive is that it's just another layer of protection, if you will, right. uh, so, that, so that thickness. you have right, more coverage over your graft after uh, doing a split thickness dissection, et cetera, and advancing the flap. So that is submerged, all or none, meaning all closed, again, like Pat with root coverage, or all exposed, which for me would be the vestibuloplasty application. And I've been able to use that quite successfully over all these years in both maxilla and mandible. And what I found quite nicely is that the, the color match is beautiful. Uh, in fact, getting some keratinized gingiva at times will happen, but when it doesn't, which is most of the time, it's still a matted, most importantly, immobilized Immobilized, result, yeah. yes, and uh, and Pat talks about that a lot, uh, Alan, mm -hmm. with regard to mm -hmm. what's keratinized above the surface, below, et cetera. What's Im what's important, as you know well, is um, that it's it's immobile, exactly. And what what I also find interesting enough, when I first heard you talk about your approach, um, you talk about a fifty percent relapse, um, I believe, shrinkage, a contraction, a shrinkage, right, contraction, yeah. and that's exactly what I have found over all the years. Yeah. That's very good because that's with Elderm, it's exactly that. So if we want five to six millimeters of a band, I'll go 10, go 12 millimeters, yeah. and then watch that just come back almost like clockwork. It's right. impressive. So I too will show that protocol and... Um, that's 50% is the best you can get because if you do a big vestibular plastic with a free ginger graft, which is like a... Full arch. Like a very invasive surgery. Absolutely. Okay. You will get 50%. Yes, okay, so for sure. So you get 50% with your technique. We, get, we also measure digitally and, and, and also manually. Manually. The contraction. And it was also 50%. That's the best you can get yes. for the big uh, Yes, big for the big ones, right. And we're talking literally two by four centimeter yeah. um, pieces of elderm or, of course, customizing, trimming, etc. But uh, that's how I really got started is the long, large, in fact, he didn't mandibles to start, then went to the maxilla, and then smaller segments. But I also found a contraindication for it as well, where you have severe atrophy, for example, the mandible. And there, a free gingival graft has to be done, because I found a 100% relapse with, uh, with elderm, just for the record. So I'll show mm, okay, that yeah. and talk more yeah. about that as well. But mm -hmm. interesting that, you know, again, Different approaches, but yet you know the end result is is very similar and um, and most importantly clinically relevant.